Yo, yo, what's up guys, Baby Bear 4812 coming at you one more time. Uh, trying to get one more video in before the sun goes down, so it's, it's a bit dark. Uh, today we got 1029, two city scheduling, and I think this one will be relatively quick. I'm, I'm going to keep peeking over there at the, uh, so I see the CN Tower from here, and I think the light show hasn't started yet, so we're good. So that's going to be like my my proxy for if this video is going too long, but this will be a quick one. Uh, Bloomberg likes this one a lot as of recent, and and the problem states, is, states the following, a, a company is planning to interview two N people, uh, given the array costs, where cost of I is equal to A cost and B cost, the cost of flying the I person to city A is A cost, and the cost of flying to city B is B cost. We need to return the minimum cost to fly every person to the city, such that exactly N people arrive in each city. So what we're told for sure is that before we dive into an example, we're told that there are an even amount of people. And there's a, there's at least two entries, so we don't need to do any error checking. And uh, we have some positive uh, cost between one and one thousand. So if we had if we had this array, ten, twenty, so person person one or person zero, let's call them, it would cost us ten dollars to fly them to or choose your favorite denomination, cans of beans. You get ten cans of beans to fly person zero to city A and 20 cans of beans to fly them to, to city B or you know 30 and, and 200 for person one, 450 for person two, uh, 30 and, and 20 for person three, the output is 110 and, and the way we'll, we'll figure out how to get to the 110 but that's composed of uh, sending this person right over here uh, to city A and and the second, sorry, per people zero and one will go to city A and then did I get that right? Yep. And then uh, people three and four will go to city B. So city A, city A, city B, city B. So now the cost will be 10 plus 30 is 40 plus 50. Is there going to city B? That's 90 plus another 20 is 110. We get a couple more examples, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to dive into this example a bit further just to see how we'd, how we'd work it through. So a couple ways that you could start thinking about this. And this problem usually trips people up a bit at least right off the bat, because one, at least where my head went the first time that I, I tried to solve this, was in taking a bit of a greedy approach and saying, let me find the cheapest route per person. So, uh, or rather by city. And, and maybe this example would be um, a bit better if I did something like this. I'm gonna change this to 40 just so the numbers work out a bit nicer. Let's pretend that I, I told myself, okay, let me figure out if I need to send half and half, so half my people to city A, half my people to city B, let me figure out who I want to send to, to city A. And, you know, by, by looking at this list, I can say, hypothetically, let's sort it. Um, if we were to sort it in increasing order of cost, the reason I'd maybe want to do that is to say, well, the cheapest cost to get people to city A, whatever combination, so the cheapest way to get people to city A will be in increasing order this way. So it would be like 10, 30, 40, 400. Imagine these two were swapped. Sorry. These two were swapped if we were to have sorted this. And if that's the case, we would send this person to city A, this person to city A, and that cost would be 10, and this would be 30. That's cool. Um, then we would want to send, I, I think that I, I I may have messed up this example here. Um, let me do this. I'm going to change it up a bit more. Yeah, sorry. Um, let me see if I can, I tried to erase this before. Let me do this. I'm gonna make this one 50. I'm gonna make this one 400. So the, the example can be a bit more illustrative. If I was to tell myself, what's the cheapest way to get people to city A, this would still be it. If we were to sort this list by, by city A, and by from lowest to highest cost, we, we would grab these two. Then we're left with these two guys and gals, and, and they would be sent to city B. So these would be their, their relevant costs. The issue is that this person would now cost 400. This person would cost 20. And overall, the cost here would have been, what is that, 40, 60, 460, yikes, 460. So this is what would have happened if we sorted people uh, by the cost of city A and we said, let's just, let's get them out to city A as cheap as possible. Um, and, and in this case, you know, there, there was a better answer here because maybe we could even do something like, well, let's send, now nah, let me think here, maybe let's send, uh, this person to, or sorry, let's send let's send these two people to city. If we send these two people to city A, we'd have a cost of, of 80, and then these two people would go to city B, and that would get us to 120. So all the you know all of a sudden we can tell by by count, for example, that there's a way to do this that's better than just saying let me sort people by city A. 
So I'm gonna unwind that now. Let's say I'm gonna I'm gonna undo this example here, and I'll, I'll leave it back to the 450 how we how we had it before. And let's say we we said okay, well, what if we tried the same tactic but for city B? And I I somehow grabbed people to go to city B, and I basically sorted by by this half here. And I said, well, by that methodology, I'd have these two people to go to city B it would only cost me 40, and that leaves these two to go to city A. The problem is again now I've got this one's really expensive here for 400. So all of a sudden we're not doing what we optimally optimally could have because this would have cost us uh, 470, whereas potentially what we could have done was we could have said, let's take these guys for 40 and these guys for 70, and that only would have cost 110, so way less. How then do we actually determine how to pick and choose who's going where? Well, let's think about it this way. Oh, light show starting. All right, we'll get there quick. Um, let's think about the following. Why is it that, think, let's think about this last example we just had. Why did we... Oops. Why were we unhappy with, with our selection here? So I think we, we sorted them and we said these two would go here and then and then these would go here. What we failed to take into account is the following. So we said, sure, City B is really cheap and we found it the cheapest possible City B combination. Um, when we did the first example, we found the cheapest possible City A combination. What we didn't take into account is how these two cities, um, what the total cost is with respect to each other. And that's the key to this, to this question, to really getting down to the bottom of it. Let's say that I wanted to drill in a bit deeper and I wanted to say, how can I think about the cost to get to one city while taking into account, I'm gonna get the light up, um, while taking into account uh, the cost of the other city. So namely, how do I actually keep one city with respect to the other in mind when I'm going through this? And it's the following way. We can think about it in, in the following way. It's a pretty simple trick, but it's a neat one. What if I ask myself, what is the, the value of the differential from one to another? For instance, if I was to go to city A instead of city B for, for this person over here, what benefit would I derive? So if I was to fly this person to city A over city B, I would save, maybe I'd, uh, I, I'd save 10, I'd save a cost of 10, so that's good. It's cheaper for me to send this person to city A than to city B. I don't know what it costs everybody else yet, but just this person alone, that's what, they, that's what they're gonna cost me. The next person over here, well, if I send them to city A instead of city B, I would save $170, cans of beans, euros, whatever whatever your favorite denomination is, goats. Um, person C, or the third person, if I was to send them to City B, that's that's awful. It's like that would set me back, I would lose 350 bucks incremental um, if I had sent them to City A instead of City B. Okay, so that's good to keep in mind. And then with this one over here, it would cost me an extra, extra 20 bucks to send them to City A. What now if we reframe the question and said it's, it, instead we said, what is it, instead of saying what does it cost me to go to city A versus what does it cost me to city B, and I asked myself, what does it cost me to send somebody to city A with respect to how much it would have costed me to send them to, to city B, okay? And that's how we're going to reframe the question to actually make this work. In this case, we, we if, really, if we think about this now, if I just was to send everybody to city A, where I would get the, the biggest delta, like I would be happiest to send them to city A because that's my best option when comparing the two cities, then in fact I'm gonna get my optimal solution. So imagine sorting this, imagine sorting this array now, except we sorted it by the delta in terms of like the benefit that we'd get from, from going to city A versus city B. Of course, you could do the same logic the, the other way around. You can figure out what the benefit is to send to city B instead of city A and sort it that way. The two methodologies are, are completely synonymous. If I was to sort this now, well, I'd, I'd notice that at the top of my list are, are these two guys, and and these two tell me that I have the biggest benefit of going to city A with respect to city B. I would save the most, I would have the most positive benefit by sending to city A versus city B. Even if I was at a loss, so let's say even, let's imagine this was negative, let's say it was more expensive for me to send everybody to city B instead of city A, and so city A would cost me more. I still need to split them 50-50. Since these two would result in the lowest loss, I would still go with, with these two. And maybe, you know, this would have to be a, a 30. This would have to be 217 for these numbers to, to work out. Um, like with this example, where I just made them negative. But regardless, that would actually get us to our optimal solution. What we then need to do is just say, well, let me sort this array based on how good my benefit is of sending them to city A, let's say. And, you know, whatever that benefit is for, for city A, I'm going to send the first half of the people there. And the second half, people are going to go to the other city. Again, you could flip the order around if, you know, if that tickles your fancy. I'm, uh, 
I'm not going to push you either way. But I, I hope that explanation made sense. The code is going to be really short, and the logic itself, I think, is is quite manageable. Um, what we're going to do is we're we're going to do this. We're going to sort this using a in Python. It's a lambda function. Uh, in some other languages like JavaScript, it would be an, an anonymous function, and you, know, you can use whatever whatever your language offers. But the way we're we're going to sort this is we're going to sort it by taking five some element. Um, I'll call it i. I'm going to take the the benefit we're going to get is is going to be i naught, so this first entry, minus i1, okay? So really, I, I kind of, I made these values positive here, but really they should be the other way around, where it costs me $10 less to go to city A versus city B, 170 less to go to city A versus city B for, for the second person. It's an extra 350 to go to city A, an extra 20 to go to city A for these two people. That way when we sort it, so if I, if I kind of sort with, um, with this in mind, I'm going to sort uh, in an ascending order, and, and the first half is going to be all the, the lowest numbers, the most negative ones, or the least positive ones, which are going to be the ones uh, where I, I derive the most net positive wealth or, or benefit with respect to the rest of the list when, when sorting it in this way. So I hope that explanation uh, made sense. I think it's not too difficult of a problem to grasp. Again, the code is going to be super short. So uh, yeah, let's dive in. If you have any questions, drop them down below as always. We don't need to do any error checking like I mentioned because we've, we're, we're given a legitimate length here. What we will need to do though, of course, is, is like I said, sort first and foremost. So we're going to sort this and we're going to use the lambda function. So we're going to say key equals a lambda and for any arbitrary item x. So this item x is one of these, they're not tuples, but one of these um, you know, arrays, array items within the, the bigger array. And we said we want to sort them in ascending order by finding the benefit from city A, from going to city A with respect to city B. Meaning that I'm just going to take, I'm going to sort it by taking x0 minus x1. These numbers are going to go in an increasing order. And so the first half that we find is going to be going to city A. And the second is going to be going to city B. All I really need to do is to say, um, I'll find some total cost variable, not find it, I'll declare it, set it equal to zero. And I'll say that for the first, um, I'll say for, for, for cost in costs, uh, we want to say, or let me do it this way, for I in range in the length of, of cost, so that's the entire length of the array, and we're going to divide it by two, non-inclusive. So imagine this, imagine that costs, like right here is a, is a length of four, okay? It's going to give us a length of four. Divided by two will get us two. Since this is a, the upper bound of this range, non-inclusive, we'll, we're going to go up to index one, meaning index zero and index one, and that'll be the first two elements out of four. And so when we do that, we're going to say that we want to increase our total cost by costs at i, and we want to go to city A for this first half. That's how we sorted it. So we're going to take the, the first cost right over here. We're going to take the 10, and we're going to take, I guess it'll be one of these 30s after. It'll be this one here. I'm then going to loop through the second half of the array. So for i in range from the length of costs divided by 2, so from index 2 all the way to the end. Uh, so that will take us to the length of costs. I'm going to say total cost plus equals cost of i1. So, you know, the folks going to city B, we're going to take, we're going to take the cost it takes to get them to city B. This is one walkthrough, one calculation. We return total cost. Oops, total cost. We, we run that. I'm going to submit it and make sure that I haven't made it funny. And there we go, 85th percentile. It's as quick as it's going to get, um, I believe, unless there's like a, another hidden trick that I don't know. But let me know down below if there is. But but yeah, this will get you guys definitely across the line. Uh, it's a cheeky solution, but I think it's a good one for the two-city scheduling problem. That, again, Bloomberg's been asking. I think it's a decent problem. Uh, if you liked it, if you found it useful, smash the like button, comment, share, subscribe, uh, share with everyone, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.